Hello dear viewers and welcome back to this channel. Recently I came across the following video while browsing on YouTube in which it is claimed that you do something good for the environment by collecting plastic waste and turning it into a fuel in a distillery. And the latest is turning plastic into diesel, which is a very easy process and just about anybody can do it. Oh no God! No, God, please, no, 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 no! Here's what we're doing today is we're going to make diesel from plastic, you know, common plastic that you have around your house. So it's very easy. All you have to do is uh, pack it into an oxygen free environment and cook it and let it do its own process. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait! The only thing that is true is that the plastic is taken out of the environment. And that's about it. Folks, the exact opposite is true here. Does nobody notice the huge fires that burn under these distilleries? This is pure energy, which is wasted for the most part, because most of it goes past the sides and heats the atmosphere. In the distillery, however, the plastic material is molten down and partially cracked. For explanation, all petroleum products, like the crude oil itself, consists of more or less long hydrocarbon chains. Carbon has four atom-based docking points for other atoms. Hydrogen has one. That's why carbon likes to combine with hydrogen. But the carbons can also bond with each other, therefore forming longer and longer chains. Short chains are gaseous at room temperature, slightly longer liquid and finally solid from the length of 17 carbon atoms and above. In addition, these chains can combine into special shapes and also dock with other atoms, which then gives them other properties. But to explain that in detail would go way beyond the purpose of this video. These other components lead to many other problems with these backyard distilleries. More on that later. In order to obtain something similar than fuel from plastic waste, only the liquid hydrocarbon chains are interesting. With the addition of heat, the long chains are now cooked until they disintegrate into the desired short chains. They practically only do this at the carbon-carbon connection points. These short chains are initially gases due to the heat and are cooled during the distillation process and thus liquefied. However, there are still large amounts of contaminants in this liquid, most of which come from the molecular compounds with other atoms mentioned above. Therefore, the stuff still needs to be cleaned in several vessels, according to the principle of a hookah, where the contents are heated again and this gas is cleaned again. Finally, from this insane waste of energy, we remember fire, fire and again fire, we get a few drops of diesel or gasoline substitute and the gaseous substances. Anyone who thinks you could refuel a car with that stuff and drive around is completely wrong. Because this liquid has nothing to do with modern fuels and the engine will quit its work pretty quickly. Instead, the broth is then burned by these self-proclaimed eco-environmentalists in ancient piston engines which don't care what they fed with as long as it has roughly the characteristics of gasoline or diesel. In the best case, the efficiency at this time is in the lowest double-digit range. Terrific! Freed the environment from harmful plastic and did something good. Mission accomplished. Or is it? Remember the other atoms and compounds in the molecular chains that give plastic different properties? These don't dissolve in pleasure, but remain as highly toxic black mass in the distillation kettle. Where our brave fighters for a clean future dump that stuff unfortunately remains unclear in this great videos. But these are the reasons why in modern recycling plants practically only HDPE and PET are recyclable with moderate effort. These consist almost exclusively of unbranched carbon chains without the other stuff. In addition, in modern plants, the exhaust gases are effectively filtered and the gases hydrocarbons produced during distillation are also used, for example, to generate part of the required heat for the distillation process itself. So what these backyard distilleries do is very elaborate pollution. Not only are huge amounts of energy wasted and these toxic slags disposed in unknown ways, but also the resulting gases simply released into the atmosphere. It is important to know that unburned methane is a, according to various sources, between 20 and 70 times more potent greenhouse gas than CO2. So what would be the alternatives? 
freeing the beaches and other nature from plastics is already very good. But instead of this nonsense, it would be probably better to bury it somewhere and let nature run its course. As strange as it sounds, but such heavily filthy and different plastics can hardly be recycled at all, not even in modern facilities. Paradoxically, it would be even more efficient for these people and the environment to use plastic directly as fuel and thus run a steam generator. The pollutant emission would be the same, but it would save the energy to operate the distillery. For our future, of course, it would be better to develop and use plastics only after their recyclability and to ban not recyclable ones. In addition, to find a way to make new plastics from the recycled material and not to burn it at the end, be it as solid or in another physical state. Burning is the worst thing we can do with crude oil, but we always do it in the end, sometimes with pointless detours. Because plastics themselves are not a bad thing, but necessary for our modern life. The only bad thing is that the extraction of crude oil without restraint is still cheaper than recycling, which only again exposes capitalism as the source of all evil. By the way, the process is called plastic pyrolysis and is nothing special or even new. So I hope I was able to bring a little clarity as to why these do-it-yourself distilleries do more harm than good to the environment. See you at the next video. Until then, stay healthy. Bye bye.